Oh, sh we better knock these quests out fast. Because in 40 minutes, it's going to be the Blood Moon. Um, And for a level 42, that's not going to be a good situation. <laughs> Let's see. Blood's first mate, Kraz. Blood Sail Buccaneers. Okay. Yeah, I'm opted out, but that doesn't mean Alliance can't or won't kill me. They will still definitely kill me. You see, we got Zandalari Ward already. Captain's chest. Oh, God. I don't have the poisoned knife rune on this character. I only got it on my main. So I don't think I can actually kite Gorlash to death. <laughs> you know, I, I bet we can make it work. Let me get some crippling poison. I've got some ideas. It's not going to be pretty, but I think we can do it. Uh, as long as I buy some crippling poison. My plan is for... Um, my plan is for um, Between the Eyes to never get resisted or fail to land, and then I'll be applying Crippling Poison while in melee range, and then once I'm out of melee range... Uh, this is... This is a bad... Idea. You know what? Let's just, let's just let it play out when we get there. It's probably a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Did you get double Crusader? No. I didn't get any Crusaders. I think the guild got one orb. And then like we got a couple other orbs, but they weren't during like guild organized farms. So like individuals got them and sold them. Infusions, no raids scheduled today. Raids once a week now, okay? Like, there's just not gonna be as many raids. I can't raid every three days. The easy content farm is over. Okay, let's set out on our journey. These are kind of low-level quests. Okay, so we don't care about those. But we're working on getting this guy set up so he can raid also. Almost got him. You know, is the podcast going to Spotify or something? I, I assume so, but it's not my podcast. It's Sarth's podcast. I'm a guest. So wherever he puts it, I don't know. I, I think it always goes on. I think it goes on YouTube, but again, not my problem, not my podcast. So they removed Righteous Orb Farm from EPL. Yes, that's correct. Okay, bozos. Whoopsies, I just vanished. That was unnecessary. Wait, hang on. Let's let's check out our focus attacks rune. It should be buffed now. Three energy every time you get a critical strike. Let's go. Alright, we need to get this. Which basically means we need to kill all of these mobs. Well, I'm netted, bro. Yikes, dude. This dude's just casting on me while I'm netted.
Okay, probably there's a follow-up quest to this, so let's just, we're right here, let's just turn this in. Eighty six. Hello, how's it going? Is the Crusader enchant gone too? I don't know. Uh, as far as I've seen, Crusade, you, you know the the like five or six people who got a Crusader enchant. I don't know. Maybe there's ten in existence. As far as I'm aware, those people still have that enchant on their weapons. All right, that's 4,000 experience. That was easy. <laughs> uh, we got to go up here. Kill 10 swashbucklers and bring back blood cell charts and blood cell orders. Okay. Um, where's this? Is this up to snuff? Yep, that's all their quests. Okay, now, now we've got all the quests I know about that I want. Oh, wait, shoot, we're about to get buffed. Let's go. Temple of the f Fervor of the Temple Explorer. Okay, thick mode now. 5% increased crit, 65 spell damage, all stats increased by 8%. Huge. Any tips on festering rot slime? Yeah, you need to just attack it for the full duration. Just stay on the target and have your healers heal you. If you're upset because someone else's parse is higher than yours, welcome to parsing. Parsing involves not doing mechanics and having people carry you through the raid so you cannot do mechanics. Hi Simon, another... Hi Simon, dropped the raid dagger yesterday. Is it good for combat potency rune? Um, it, it's going to be your best main hand, but if you're using combat potency, it's not going to be a very good offhand. Little pickpocket. I want to pickpocket all these guys because I want to generate a lot of lockboxes while I'm leveling up. Um, oh, what the hell is this? Murloc. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's not good. Um, because that'll make leveling lockpicking easier. Seven hundred and fifty six experience for killing a mob. That guy got fucking annihilated. <laughs> Holy shit, we are dunking on these mobs, dude. This is this is just like Nomergon gear, man. It's not even like full bis Nomergon gear. It's like mostly most of the good stuff. Like I don't have the gyro trinket. Oh yeah, we have to do another Nomergon today. I totally forgot. We did one yesterday. And Nomergon is uh incredibly based three day lockout. So we get to do that all the fucking time. Dude, phase four is gonna be sick when we can do Molten Core, Onyxia, Zolgarub, AQ20, whatever the new raid is. I love raiding. Okay. We're gonna level up like two or three rogues. Just pronto. Mm, we're gonna have so many raids to do, it's gonna be out of control. 
is focus attacks now bis helm rune well unfortunately there's some nuance to what runes are better in what situations so your life's just gonna be tough in there not being a single rune that's just the bis rune you use all the time What I think you should do is read the FAQ channel on the Discord. There's a whole post about different runes and when different runes are better or worse. Big pog damage. Good evening, Simon the Hat Connoisseur, the Excel Sheet Wizard, the answerer of Googleable questions, the permitter of swagging out. Thank you for guiding the blind and deaf to their biz lists. <laughs> Never change my pookie bear and keep fighting the good fight. Nismo, wow, thank you for five bucks. I think I appreciate that. I appreciate the support. You have permission to swag out. This is going to aggro other dudes, I think. Yep. Okay. Uh, evasion, Blood Fury, uh, Slicey. Interrupt that. Knock these guys down next. That's a level up. They are all dead. <laughs> Sturdy junk box. Let's go. That's good. Warlock minions. Uh, okay. There's also gonna be some, like, charts and stuff we have to pick up somewhere. I wasn't really looking for those before. But we'll find them. Righteous Orb Farm when? No more Righteous Orb Farms. Uh, unfortunately, Blizzard took it away. I think, personally, what I, I said this uh, the other day when I was, like, speculating if they would change this. I think if they were going to change the Righteous Orbs, what they probably should have done, what, what I think they should have done, is instead of making them not accessible, they should have made them more accessible. Yeah, I see right there. Boom. Chart. And then there, I think there's two different items we have to loot. So, like, the way they would make them more accessible is they'd say, like, oh, they are going to also drop off mobs in Tyr's hand. Wonder why they took it away? Well, let me tell you why, and it's pretty simple. The math the math was that it takes about 66 total hours of playtime to farm one enchant worth of Righteous Orbs on average. And that's a bit ridiculous. Um, you know, that that's like six hours, 40 minutes... Per person, but you need like 10 people to farm it efficiently. That's a that's a week and a half of a of a work week. Yeah, I guess I guess if they if they took the approach of making it more accessible this phase, then it makes le next phase weapon enchants less exciting. Bro, some folks in my guild lost their fucking minds when the news came out that the, the, you know, the orb farm was nerfed. You know, all the classic fucking blizzard, fucking stupid company nerfing this farm, but not nerfing that farm. There are some people that really, really lost it. Jerome, Jerome was one of them. Jerome really liked the orb farm. <laughs> he, he was he was having a tough time.
Does this guy want to fight? Nope, he's leaving. Nope, maybe he's not leaving. I don't know if he wants to kill me or not. He could just be building rage, so then he could charge me uh, soon with a full rage bar. This could be a dangerous pull. But they're all melee mobs, so let me shoot one of them. Then I can pull back. Okay, that looks good. Hand is over the vanish button. I was I was waiting to like if he charged me, I was going to have vanished before he even got to me. And then probably not get stunned. I think. That's how it worked out in my head. Oh, shit. Look, a solid chest. Let's go. Never mind. Aggroed. Blade Flurry was on cooldown there. Oh, no go on that one. A couple of potions. Now is a blade flurry. I'll help take out the pet. Yep. Pet just got wasted. Oh, I am disarmed. Okay, where's the other scroll thing that I need? Hello, sir. Tailoring supplies? What the hell? Uh, I'm gonna have to read my quest log here. Blood sale charts, blood sale orders. Oh, there. It was on the stool, not the table. It was like literally right in front of me. Okay, we killed all the swashbucklers, but we still need snuff. Six more snuff. So, that's just kill whatever. Any of these blood sales. Who would leave something? Yeah, like, if you leave it on a chair, someone's just gonna sit on it. And then it's gonna get wrecked, dude. At the very least, it's going to get all crinkled. What is your Thistle Tea of choice, and why is it Bang Energy? <laughs> no, actually... Ah, uh, it's water. This is, uh, not Moonshine. Strong. Ah, I can't have too much of that at once. Best horde race for Cataclysm? I do not know or care. What do you think of that? It, it was probably a good decision. To remove the orbs from Season of Discovery. That was, um, next level degenerate. This is not good. Vanish? Ooh, boy. Okay, I, I didn't... Okay. 
I popped all those cooldowns thinking we might be able to make it. And then we were at 200 health again. And I reevaluated that assessment. Oh, also, we leveled up. I gotta get this. I should have taken this on the last level, too. You know, this opportunity point should be in remorseless attacks. Oh, shit, a level 46 gnome? We could probably kill that guy. Yeah, the two things I really am, like, not enthusiastic about Cataclysm is, um, one, that version of the game already has a WoW token. Blizzard not only allows you to buy gold, but, like, literally is the one selling you gold. I don't think that's good for the game. Um, second thing about Cataclysm that really turns me off is, um, you know, every time I read about the raids and the heroics, people say, oh, you know, Cataclysm heroics, Cataclysm raids, they're hard. You know, this is difficult PvE content. Personally, I don't think difficult PvE content is really what I'm interested in. This idea that, like, the content, you like, you need top 5% players to clear the content? Fuck off. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I remember when I was doing a Heroic Lich King and I was complaining about, like, damn, we did, a, we did like, over a hundred wipes on this boss before we got it in my guild. And I have people in my chat being like, <laughs> just wait until Cataclysm. Heroic Ragnaros is a 400 wipe boss. And I'm, uh, as if I, like, I feel like in these people's heads, they're like, Oh, he, he's automatically going to play this, even if it's terrible and he doesn't like it. And he's just going to suffer through Heroic Ragnaros 400 white boss. He doesn't know what's coming. It's like, no, I'm just not going to play that. If you're telling me the PV boss is, you know, over 100 wipes for a, a competent guild to take down, that's bad. <laughs> Simple solution. Don't play it. <laughs> this guy's been standing here for a while. I'm kind of suspecting he's AFK, but at the same time, he's a Shadow Priest. So if he presses one global against me, he probably wins. So I'm not going to antagonize him. Look, Ritter, I, I'm gonna be honest. If I was gonna not stream a game and just play it for fun, it would be fucking Pokemon Crystal, Golden Sun, and Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Back when games were good. Maybe even Pokemon Red. Fuck it. I could play Pokemon Red, too. I, I'm, uh... I knew it would happen. I'm not at all surprised that it happened, but I'm still a little disappointed in how incredibly poorly the VODs of me playing Pokemon Crystal did when I uploaded them to my VODs channel. It's like, I know everyone that watches that channel watches it for WoW content, not Pokemon content. But those videos are like less than one-tenth the viewership of like any random ass WoW VOD. <laughs> we did a little bit of Pokemon Crystal on stream um, in the past month and I put a little bit of it up onto the VODs channel. Wait, hang on. I meant to go this way. We're going to attempt Gorlash without having Poisoned Knife Rune. Which is just probably just going to be bad. But we'll see. Half 
half buried bottle. Carefully folded note. Item begins a quest 45, though. Okay. Let's see. If we're going to make this work, Shadow Step won't help. Shuriken Toss might help if I have, like, enough energy. Quick Draw goes on the chest. Um, Double Crippling is going to have to go on the weapons. Where's my Crippling Poison? I know I crafted Crippling Poison. Guys, I don't need a bag add-on. I know you guys keep telling me how I need a bag add-on to help find second bag top right. I know you guys keep telling me I need a bag add-on. I don't need a... Trust me, guys. I don't have a problem. It's okay. Okay, so the plan here is... We're just... It's just... I mean, it's just gonna be bad. But, um, look, look. Um, the plan is in my head right now, okay? I'll let you know how it turns out. I think we have to start with a big kidney. I'm gonna agility elixir. Whoa, that missed. That's not good. Ooh, my crossbow skill is nine. I might have to reevaluate this plan. I aggroed the sand crawler. That's. Also not good. Okay, the shuriken toss aggroed the sand crawler. Okay, let's reset. Let's reset. I can't be aggroing the sand crawler here. Just for fun, or does he drop? He's he's got a quest reward. We have a quest specifically to kill this mob. And I'm on a quest to have a non-zero crossbow skill. Oh, he dodged. I'm in trouble. Gonna have evasion up. Just get my combo points back. Get a crippling poison on him. Now I'm gonna run away. Wow, the crossbow skill of nine is really hampering this plan, I would say. Good. Two mutilates in. What's the cooldown on this? 10 seconds. Okay, so when the crippling poison goes away, we do that. It didn't work. We gouge. It didn't work. We mutilate. He's poisoned again. Okay, good. This goes way better if you have poison knife rune and... Um... More than zero crossbills, crossbow skill. Okay, trust me on that. Failed. Am I fast to just run? Parried. Got a poison application. It's not looking good. Let's drink a healing potion. Gun was successful. That's very good. Big rupture. Run away. 
Didn't get hit. Nice. Keep him in combat with a little shuriken. Gun did not connect. Good. Good, good, good. We got through clean. That failed. Run, 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 gun, keep running, gouge, gouged, nice, okay. Gun is not connecting very much. Got the stun, nice. Dodged his attack. Ooh, gun finally connected. That's a nice slow. I'm basically delaying until I can do another between the eyes. Oh. F. Gouge run. Got the poison application. This, this will work. I was a little skeptical after noticing my crossbow skill was 24. That it maybe wasn't going to work. But I think we'll be fine. He's actually just hyper slow. So like it's it's pretty easy for me to just walk away. You know, like this. I think he's actually just slower than mine. Oh, maybe he's extra slow because he's low health now. That could be a thing. Maybe it was faster at the start. There, got a stun. Should finish him off here. There we go. Got Smot's chest. Casper MTL says, seeing you do this on my first day in stream is pretty dope. Well, let me tell you what, Casper, welcome to the stream, first of all. Second of all, the only reason that was as difficult as it was is because, uh, one, I don't have poison knife rune because I'm lazy. That would make it very easy if I had poison knife rune. And two, my crossbow skill was 30 by the end of it, starting at like five, six. Uh, and that was causing my other ranged abilities to fail to land frequently. Um, it would it would have also been way easier had more of my between the eyes landed and more of my quick draws landed. Thor, hello, redeeming change half. That's what you can do on this stream, you guys. This is. This is basically the only thing to spend channel points on, is making me change what hat I'm wearing. Boom. Okay, next we're going to go over here for a Curious by the Bundle. And the Blood Moon is starting in seven minutes, so... It's very possible that, um... You know, we're, we're going to have to avoid the Blood Moon PvP shenanigans, okay? Because we're pretty low level. <laughs> we can still predict if an orb's going to drop or not. I could put up a stream prediction for will the orb drop. Blood Sail Mage. Oh, that's not what we want. We gotta go a little farther north. Not the Blood Sails. We're looking for the Nagas here. To get the Akiris by the Bundle quest. Alright, he's attacking me? I don't even care, dude. Running away.
Yeah, Thor Thor is a gambling man. He um <laughs> He's doubting often, let's say. Ah, uh, okay, let's um fix our rune setup so it's not terrible anymore. Shadow step here. Look, Thor, all I'm saying is you don't typically win gambles by believing in this stream, okay? This, this is, most of the gambles in this stream are like 2% drops. <laughs> Tell me, is Shadow Blade worse than Julie's dagger? Ah, uh, well, hang on, I'm gonna... What I'm going to do is, instead of spoon-feeding you the answer, I'm going to tell you how to find out the answer. Simonize Gearing Guide Phase 3. Alright, look at this. Gearing Guide, Bis Gear, Pre-Raid Bis, Enchants. You mouse over it, it shows you that there's a fucking breakdown of 18 different boots you could wear in this video. Alright, so we go to this video. And then you want to know about Shadow Blade and Julie's Dagger. Okay, so let's go... Main Hand Weapon. Okay, here's some Main Hand Weapon options. Here's some Off Hand Weapon options for Honor Among Thieves. Here's some Off Hand for Combat Potency Rune. And there you go. See, in this day and age, you gotta be able to solve your own problems. That's what I say. We're not looking at sword combat anytime soon. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Alright, one Akira's read so far. I am pretty sure Blizzard has just decided that rogues are dagger users now. Big pog damage. This rogue guide, tie for all you do. Oh, we just pickpocketed a star ruby off of that guy. Hell yeah. Uh, Luthien, coming in with a Prime Gaming, 14 months of support. Thank you very much, says Bis Rogue Guide, TY for all you do. Well... Thank you very much for the support. Okay, this is annoying. It's putting bleeds on me that make it hard for me to approach in stealth, so I can't pickpocket easily. I mean, what I like doing is big pog damage, and the way it is in Season of Discovery, you don't do big pog damage without daggers on a rogue. Okay. Lead tick. Let's go, 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 go. Uh, I did not get close enough before the next bleed tick occurred. These guys are getting uh, worked on, okay? I now have the crippling poison on my weapons for 17 more minutes, which means my weapons aren't triggering instant poison from my deadly brew rune. They're still triggering deadly from deadly brew rune, deadly poison. Um, but, uh, I can't click this off. <laughs> Unfortunate. Any chance they buff Sinister Saber Slash? Sure, there's a, there's a non-zero chance that happens, but I'm not a Blizzard dev. I don't know what the fuck they want to do or will do. Wait, wait, wait. They're saying... I, I was reading a little bit of this this morning. 
Some people are saying they buffed Blade of Eternal Darkness drop rate. What if we got Blade of Eternal Darkness on a rogue? What you do you do you guys think it would trigger from poisons? And if it did, would it be good? Blade of Eternal, like 2% isn't that bad. We can probably solo the runs, just not quickly. Hang on, I have an idea. I have an idea, hang on. Powering up the old spreadsheet. We're going to code this in without the proc because that's very easy. And then we're going to make an estimation being like, how much does the proc need to do to make this be good? Okay. Unhide gear tab. Three fifty four. Blade of Eternal Darkness, one hand, dagger, no agility, strength, any of this crap. But it does have 20 spell damage. It has 1.5 speed, 34 to 70 damage, main hand only. Chance on landing a damaging spell to deal 100 shadow damage. 10% fixed proc chance. We could, we could actually implement that pretty easily. Um, okay, let's load up a stock build. I don't know what's in the sheet right now. Okay, Julie's Dagger, Combat Potency, sure. Now, oh wait, hang on, we have to do one more thing. Custom Sort, there we go. Now it'll actually be near the top of the list. Okay, we're at 1172.05, 72.05, and we go down to 1146.52. That's a large DPS loss. Um, to make this good, let's see, if it does 100 shadow damage on a 10% proc chance, we could also... Roughly code this in by just saying instant poison does 10 more damage per proc. What happens if we cheat and do that? That's like kind of scuffed, but it's going to get us most of the way there and it's kind of easy to do. And we can get a approximate number. What's going on with this formula? Plus 10. Plus 10. Plus 10. Plus 10. Still not good. Even if we did that... I think this is actually overvaluing it a little bit. Even if it triggered from poisons. Still not good. Give power mana. If only it said give power energy. I still kind of want to get it. Just, you know, like... I was really obsessed with Crusader because it was just a... It was an absolutely insane flex to have Crusader in Phase 3 of Season of Discovery, right? 
it wasn't so much about the the like raw dps gain or like is it worth it as chat kept insisting it was not worth it you know for the raw dps games you know like it's about the flex <laughs> Imagine if I had Blade of Eternal Darkness on a rogue with Crusader. <laughs> Poison and Bleed Immune. Yeah, we would have to use a ranged build with like Shuriken Toss damage. Poison Knife damage. It would not be pretty. It would absolutely not be pretty. I wonder if we could solo the wild offering guy too. And then every 10 runs, we could go get a random dark moon card and you could gamble on if it was gonna be a dunes card that was worth monies or or if it was gonna be shit. Inventory, what the? F Eat pumpkin. Okay, open clams. Skip music track. I don't want to do that one. Oh, Dwarf Fortress, though? I want to listen to that. Okay, my inventory filled up way faster than I imagined it would. And we may have to go back into town sooner than I thought. It's because I have all this stupid-ass cheese. Sturdy junk box, okay. Raw spotted yellowtail, okay. That's a double pull. Okay, we got evasion. Got seven Acurus reeds right now. Did you set deadly poison to proc it too, or just instant? I did a scuffed implementation that wasn't really good. Uh, but the scuffed way I did it was basically simulating instant poison triggering it. And not deadly. Maybe both could trigger it. You know, like maybe, you know, because deadly brew is making two poisons happen at once. Maybe that's giving it two chances to trigger. I don't know. We're we're in uh, the land. We're in speculation land here, you know. That guy had a box on him, but I couldn't loot it because my inventory was full. All right, we have to go back to town. Um, not because I want to, but because my inventory is full. Luthien says they hotfix the orb drops, but people farm them so you can get Crusader. Yeah, there's a very, very limited number of orbs still in circulation, and it is possible to get a Crusader enchant. I, I've been told, I haven't confirmed it myself, that they made Crusader proc chance be zero. So, like, even if you have the enchant, it doesn't do anything right now. But I haven't confirmed that. I kind of want to. I I just kind of want to get Blade of Eternal Darkness. Maybe it procs from Fiery Weapon. You know, maybe it procs from Fiery Weapon. Maybe it procs from Instant Poison. Um, maybe it procs from Deadly Poison. I I kind of just wanna. I just kind of wanna. I wanna. I wanna get it. Okay. No matter how stupid it is, it's definitely stupid. It's procs from Chili. Fuck yeah, dude. Frost oil offhand back on the menu. Perhaps.
Sturdy junk boxes. Fish oil needs to get sent away. The cloth gets sent away. The mana potion goes away. The lesser, the weaker healing potion goes away. I think pretty much everything else gets vendored. What gets shoved in the bank? This, for sure. That goes away. Okay. Back to turning in quests, vendor a couple things. So far, the Blood Moon happening hasn't really um, negatively impacted me. The Blood Mooners haven't bothered me yet. Okay, nothing to do in here. Kill Captain Stillwater, Captain Keelhaul, and Fleet Master Viralian. Blackwater, and he's just gonna give me a male tunic? Dude, I can't even use a male tunic. They even expect me to do that quest? I sure hope not, because there's no reward for me. Buck Mary kill between Righteous Orb Farming, Silithid Harvester Spawn Camping, and Watching Paint I'm not gonna engage with this, okay? <laughs> Those are all awful. I think, although I think the worst of those is Silithid Harvester Spawn Camping. Because prequest stacking inherently is cringe. And that's like the most extreme level of cringe prequest stacking. Yeah, paint dries 100% of the time. You see, it's on the wall. It's, it's going to end up dry eventually. Zanzil mixture, Mistvale giblets. Yeah, okay, we, let's do the gorilla quest now. Dio Brando, it's a, it's okay. The fun questions are indeed fun. <laughs> yeah, last phase, all I did was like, I just did like 10 quests in Booty Bay and 10 quests in Tanaris. And then I had two locations that I needed to go to to turn in my like pre-quest stack and I was done in like five minutes and I think I really think that's the way to do pre-questing is instead of trying to like min max the whole system of like of like oh my god if I get this quest that's stage 16 of this quest line then I can spend eight extra minutes running to the quest giver to turn it in but because it gives so much more experience, I end up getting, you know, 420,000 experience per hour for those eight minutes instead of getting the 418,000 experience per hour I would have gotten if I did this other quest that turns in at a place I was already going to. You know? Like, just make a pre-quest stack that you can turn in in five fucking minutes. Apparently, you don't have to do the Dark Iron Ordnance stuff for Ratchet Runes? Wait, wait, wait. Are we finally getting main gauche? Is that what you're telling me, Inzi? Because, like, that rune's terrible. 
there's no way I'm exerting any amount of effort to get it. But if the effort is literally just go to Ratchet. Go to Ratchet and it costs three gold. Nice. <laughs> Good place to farm Julie's dagger. Good question. The auction house. Farm gold and buy it on the auction house. Many players have this misconception that there's some place out in the world that you specifically go to farm an item like Julie's Dagger. Julie's Dagger is what we call a world drop item. It's got like a 0.01% drop chance against, uh, from like 001% drop chance from any mob anywhere in the world of the appropriate level. There's no reasonable way you go out and intentionally farm this it does not infusion. Are you trying to aggravate me right now? Because I see that Kappa sign right now. That 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 emoji you put. Right. So for items like that, Libram of Veracity, Julie's Dagger, Shadow Blade. If you want to get those, you need to farm gold, and then buy one when one is affordable. Uh, Vein Killer. This is only the second rogue that I'm leveling up this phase. Uh, so far. We were slow on the leveling, just really focused on maxing out the main character before starting an alt this phase. I think that was way more chill. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about gold farming is you watch all these videos on YouTube. There's like hundreds of them of like the new best gold farm in Season of Discovery. And they're like, I'm making 80 gold an hour killing gorillas in Stranglethorn Vale because on my server, gorilla fangs are selling for five gold a piece. It might be different on your server and they might only sell for 20 silver each on your server. So your results may vary. And the funny thing about all these videos is um, you can farm incursions for like over 100 gold per hour while getting reputation at the same time. It's like, and it's, and it's not difficult. It is super not difficult. You don't have to be creative. You don't have to know any secret trick. Just farm incursions with a group and you'll rake in over 100 gold per hour. Um, so like any time you have a gold farm and someone's bragging about an amount of gold that like isn't way above 100 gold per hour, it's irrelevant. Fucking go do your incursion. Just go do incursions. <laughs> I mean, I think like over the weekend, I tried to get a bunch of gold by spam disenchanting wicked leather headbands. And I mean, the great thing about that is I didn't actually have to pay attention to the game most of the time. Cause I just like set it to craft 40 of them and come back in half an hour or whatever. Um, but like, honestly, I could have spent a similar amount of time farming incursions and like my main would be exalted and have the trinket now and I'd probably have about as much gold. But I would have had to pay attention the whole time. Can't have that. Okay, what do we... Uh, I'm still trying to get more Gorilla Fangs. I've got all the giblets I need from this guy, but we have a different quest that involves 10 Gorilla Fangs that I'm definitely going to be able to solo. Okay. Rogue's damage is great. Yeah, it's very good this phase. Three foobs. 
Very, very rogue, rogue strong. Notorious B.I.G. back for another stream. Hello. So how, it says, how are you? I am doing good. I'm feeling a little sad that like I I wanted to get the PvE guide video out more re uh, sooner than I have. I have like a half-baked script and a couple of video assets of like overlays for the videos, but I haven't gotten it out yet. So I uh, feel a little bit bad about that, but I'm going to try to get that out in the next like one or two days. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually a little more difficult than normal because there's, like, literally six different viable rune setups you could use. And I have to think of a good way to explain that in a video. And, uh, initially I was like, okay, when we're talking about runes, there's this option and there's this option and there's this option and there's this option and here's this. And then, like, I wrote that script and I was like... Yeah, this is not good. I think I've thought about it more now. I think the way to do that is start with the option that I recommend. So when I start talking about talent and rune options, I'm just like, cut to the chase, combat potency, get yourself a fast offhand weapon. That's what I recommend. And then after just like clearly saying, this is what I recommend, this is why I recommend it, then then go on to be like, but you could also do Carnage Wrist Rune, or you could do any of the other Helm Runes. Here are some situations and considerations about um, using those. It's very important to like figure out the good way, like, You got to figure out a good way to deliver complicated information. When you people, I think mostly people that watch YouTube guide videos do not want to be presented with, you know, six different options and a decision they have to make. You know what I mean? So uh, mo most phases, there really isn't a decision. You know, it's this rune setup, this talent specialization, or you're doing 10% less damage, you know, or whatever. Do I have the gorilla? Oh, I have 10 gorilla fangs now. Okay. This quest is kind of difficult. Wait, I have sleeping bag. I didn't sleeping bag. 3% mm, experience gain for losing three minutes. Uh, I'll sleeping bag next time I go AFK, if I remember, but I'll probably forget. Okay, we have... Do I have boons in my... I do have a boon. We could take out the world buffs for this one. Hmm. Hmm. Should we risk our DMF? I think we should take out the world buffs. I, th I think we should take them out. And blast this quest. There's no way we fail if we have the world buffs on our side. I could have mechanical... Could have dragonling up too? Wait, wait, wait. Here's the way to do it. I can summon dragon... Right before starting the quest. The last wave with all the Gabagools. Oh, shit, 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 shit. My evasion is on cooldown. I didn't realize that I, I used that. We 100% have to have evasion if we're going to do that quest. Yeah, we'll sleeping bag now. That's a good call. Boom, sleeping. Oh, but I got no homies to sleep with. Usually when I deploy the sleeping bag, a bunch of homies come and they, they sleep with me. 
Unboon, no, 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 we're gonna unboon, do the quest, definitely not fail, and then very quickly reboon, okay, to lose minimal time on the DMF. Going expo improved exposed armor for my raid. This lockout says Woza the Clown. Would you say cut to the chase would be optimal for this? Yes, absolutely. With a carnage setup, normally you're juggling three finishing moves. If you're trying to do a carnage setup and exposed armor, you're now juggling four finishing moves. You're just gonna fuck it up. <laughs> And it, like when you're doing expose armor, if you drop that shit for one fucking second, you throw away pretty much all the benefit that you were potentially going to gain over homunculus. We could go for the attack chicken too, but the problem with the attack chicken is um, if I unequip the trinket, the, the summon goes away, which is kind of annoying. Uh, which is not true with the mechanical dragonling. For the dragonling, you just, you can, you can summon it and then swap it out. You can do pretty much whatever fucking rune setup you want, Asapov. Between Carnage or Cut to the Chase on the wrist and any of the three head runes. They're just like some special conditions on when you might use different head runes. And you can read all about that in the FAQ channel on the Discord. Got a nice long post explaining the difference as well as the uh, theoretical simulator and spreadsheet DPS estimations. Okay, I think we should have the chicken out. So there's three waves. What we need to do is we need to save evasion for the third wave. And I think we want to blade flurry the second wave just to make it easier. But on the third wave, all we need to do is kill the boss and then the other guys are, are we can just leave them and vanish but the the wave one is pretty easy wave two is a couple more mobs and we need to fully clear both of those so i'm thinking i do both of the summons on the first wave um then unequip them for the second wave we go back to like these two trinkets do a blade flurry on second wave to help take it down quickly. Try to heal up as quickly as I can by eating between the waves. And then have evasion plus maybe one DPS cooldown, like a Thistle Tea. Thistle Tea is definitely getting saved to final wave. Take out the boss faster. Yeah. Okay, we have evasion again. It's time to do it. Let's do, uh, let me, let me throw up a prediction. Big pog damage. Uh, choose outcome, will the orb drop? That was from yesterday. Scourge, coming in with a prime. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the stream, Scourge. Eight months of support. That's very generous of you. I appreciate it. You can distract the boss off of the pack. Ooh. Yeah, I was thinking about potentially doing distracts, but I had no idea if it was actually going to work. So you're saying like I distract the boss off of the pack and then I can just pull him solo or you're saying the other ones are still going to be linked to him? Will Simon complete this quest first try? Here's the prediction. One minute up. The other guy should aggro them. Oh, like this guy will aggro. Okay. Okay. Don't you have to bring back the gorilla quest first? No. I'm on Stranglethorn Fever. I'm on Booning. Ah, uh, wait. Let me let me let let you guys put your points in on this. 
Currently, everyone is believing. I'm only level 43, you guys. Wait, do I have a talent point to spend? <laughs> Unspent talent zero. Okay, never mind. Yeah, we're, we're good. 5,800, 3,800. Let's get it going. People were telling me this quest was like super hard in phase one. Or sorry, phase two. See, look, the summons are fighting the other guys. That's good. Oh, I didn't unboon. I said I was going to unboon. I forgot. Dragon is dead. Attack chicken is still alive. That's a fuckload of mobs. I have to evasion, I think. Fuck. They're not aggroed onto anything else. Blade Flurry? I got a Battle Squawk. Uh-oh. This is not looking good. I'm in big trouble. Eat food. Enter stealth. I don't think I can distract... Like, I need to heal right now. No, Conda isn't the boss. Mock is the boss. That's the one I need. Okay, they're aggroed on this guy. That's good. I'm full healed now. Thistle T. Heart of Mock. Vanish. That guy can die. I don't care. We got it. Didn't even need the world buffs. What happens after that NPC dies? I didn't realize that that NPC could tank mobs for me. This was actually way easier than I thought. All you need, to, all you really need to do is clear the first two packs, because then you can just pull the boss off of. Like you can let all the other mobs aggro the boss or the NPC and pull the boss off of him and kill the boss. Basically, one v one. Okay. Yeah, I actually thought that was going to be significantly more difficult. Alright, Zanzil's Mixture is the next one we have to do. And it looks like I have plenty of inventory room for that. What do you feel about the Righteous Orb change? Probably for the better. That was a incredibly next level degenerate farm. I mean, I, I mapped it out with the respawn time and drop chance. It takes, on average, to get one enchant, so that's two Righteous Orbs. You know, you're gonna be farming that mob for about six hours, 40 minutes, but it takes about 10 people to comfortably kill the mob and the bodyguards to get that fast respawn. So really that's six hours, 40 minutes times 10 people is 66 hours and 40 minutes per crusader enchant. That's, that's more than a whole work week. It's in fact one and a half work weeks of, of time. 
Like here, here in the States, you know, the, the standard is a 40 hour work week. That's a job. Yeah, I think that, I think it's when something, is, you know, is powerful and accessible, but requires such an extreme, uh, you know, such such an extreme amount of effort i think it's okay when they remove something like that from the game <laughs> and yes the the righteous orbs will be very easy to get in phase four uh when you can just farm stratholme for them I opened with Garrod on that guy just because I felt like it. It's probably not even good. Blood corrupted two set, good enough to put on. Usually, what, what usually what I found when I was upgrading my gear is I needed an upgrade in every single slot so I could upgrade insulated boots, legs, and chest all at the same time. Uh, I did that with two pieces of blood corrupted set and an albino croc scale boot and it was like uh, on my spreadsheet that was like barely a dps upgrade over just sticking to the insulated leathers but i was not gonna slam a libram of veracity plus eight agility enchant on my insulated leather or leggings uh so i really wanted to switch up to the blood corrupted ones and then i put the eight agility enchant on it and then that's a big deal Trying to stealth and uh, get this guy so I could uh, pickpocket him. Doing pretty well on the mixtures. I remember when I was doing this before, this was uh, this did not progress very easily. The drop rate was pretty bad, but I feel like I'm getting eh, reasonably lucky. Six out of twelve so far. Zanzil's mixture. Uh, still six. Okay, six more. There's a mob here, Zanzil. Uh, Zanzil the Outcast. Yeah, he summons a totem that summon that then summons skeletons, and it's kind of annoying. <laughs> So I'm just going to avoid him, I think. They fixed the totem. Now, are you saying that just because you want to see me pull the mob and get killed? No, I'll pull the mob. Okay, we'll clear stuff around him and then pull Zanzil. See what happens. This guy was probably not going to pull if I shot him because he's a caster. He can do that shadow bolt. So I had to come up to him and approach him from this side so I didn't proximity aggro those guys. All right, now here, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Maybe I should sap the witch doctor and then just go on Zanzil. I don't think I can get these separated. Totem. Kill it. 
There we go. Okay. That was not bad at all. I just killed the totem. But we did get physical damage minus 15. That's extremely bad. There's like, this curse exists in a lot of places. Curse of weakness, which is a flat reduction to every instance of physical damage you do. And it's a really big deal for a fast attacking class where you're, you know, you have two weapons, they have fast attack speeds, they're attacking frequently for many, many small instances of damage. If you do a flat minus 15 to every one of those, that's a, that's a, sig it's a pretty significant nerf to your damage output. Um, whereas, like, compare that to, say, like, a Rhett Paladin with a two-handed weapon, or, like, an ar Arms Warrior with one single two-handed weapon that swings every three seconds or something. This is much less impactful for their damage output there. Uh, let's see, Zanzel's Ward of Zanzel will now despawn after 30 seconds, summon a reduced number of zombie skeletons, and will be recast less frequently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, that thing was pretty toxic, that it would it would spawn, and then it would just... Sp the, what the totem did is it would spawn uh, skeletons just endlessly. And if you aggroed that mob and then, like, ran away or, like, didn't, didn't, like, immediately kill the totem or whatever, you could get pretty quickly into a pretty bad situation with a whole, with, with a whole bunch of these, uh, zombies being spawned. And they don't leash. Right, that was the thing. It didn't matter how far you ran away from the guy, the zombies would keep spawning and keep chasing you. How are we looking? Oh, wait, we have 12. I didn't even notice. Okay, we have uh, one more quest I want to do here. We were going to go kill um, kill the three Bloodsail captains. Then I think we'll wrap up Stranglethorn Vale. That's my idea. But we can take a nice scenic route riding our large timber wolf along the beautiful shores of Stranglethorn Vale, in the shade of the palm trees, with the breeze of the ocean. Beautiful. Currently outside where I am, it's uh, overcast, a little bit windy, looks like it's going to rain. Uh, I don't really want to be outside right now. Forest fires, damn. That's not good. What do you think is better, insulated set or emerald set? Insulated, for sure. Rainy in Germany all day long? Damn. All right, so what it's looking like, Captain Stillwater, Fleet Master. It looks like one of them is going to be on each of the boats. Well, there's one boat, two boat, three boat. Let's go to this boat first. Wait. No, yeah, this is this is where I'm supposed to go. Is that the mob there? No, that's the steering wheel of the boat. Uh, these might be a little bit higher level. I'm not sure. 
Uh, the quest is yellow for me, so it's probably totally doable. I'm gonna get a stupid male tunic that I can't use, but that's okay. I think we just basically do stealth mission. Find wherever the quest NPC is, stealth up to him. Like, this is this is the rogue way. You know, we don't need to kill every mob on the boat. Make it a assassination mission. Boom, enter stealth mode. Okay, well, someone else already killed every mob on the boat by the looks of it. Elder Magus. Big Mikey. Hmm. Deckhand, Elder Magus. Elder Magus, Captain. Hang on. Where's he? Do you need the captain? Stillwater. He cleared most of the way here. It'd be a big dick move for me to swoop in and take the mob. No response. He appears to be uh, AFK. You need the okay. Well, we uh we did our due diligence of offering him to join us. He did not. So, we press on. Uh oh, I aggroed something else. Deckhand? Oh, he got my Toxic Revenger buff. It must have applied in a big AoE. Oh, we have, um. Uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're lucky we were able to vanish that. Yeah, that was, um, mobs from up above. One of them is called Brutus. <laughs> what the? A mechanical elemental guy? Robot or something? Alright, let's, let's get off of this stupid boat. It looks like the way up top is now blocked off due to respawns. But we can probably find, um... Wait, can, we, can I jump out of any of these windows? Looks like they're all blocked off from... I'm gonna try to jump out the window. Okay, whatever. I'm gonna have to just stealth past these guys. Should be fine. Oh god, there's a lot of them. Portello's riddle is potentially over here. Yeah, we don't need that. I think it, it can spawn in any of the ships. I wasn't really looking for it. I assume it's like a scroll on the ground or something. Look, it'll be just like in uh, Black Sails where like there's ship where you're like swimming up to the ship and then you stealthily board the ship and start and then it's on the everyone on the ship is unexpecting it and uh you take them by surprise that's basically what we're doing here Zyrene, hello Zyrene says hey simon eyes my favorite rogue completely random unrelated question to anything but what would saber slash need to be competitive with mutilate. Um. Well, what do you know? I have the sheet open right now. Let's get a stock um, build here. 
1182 with this mutilate setup, focused attacks, cut to the chase, whatever. Uh, I think I had a saber slash, cut to the chase, and honor among thieves. Um, we were at like 1182 before, we're at 1083, so we're about 10% behind, roughly. Mmm. We could buff the combo point generation to two, and then you, I mean... The mutilate's winning on combo points per energy and damage per energy. Uh, I think... So, like, you could just buff the damage of, Sinist of, of Saber Slash. Uh, right now, like, the way I have it set up, I have Honor Among Thieves with Saber Slash, and that's, like, the best one I've seen so far. Like, you go Combat Potency or you go Focus Attacks, and it's way worse. And the reason Honor Among Thieves is better is because when you have Honor Among Thieves, you do less combo point builders and more finishing moves. And because you've selected Saber Slash, your combo point builder is just an inefficient energy expenditure. So when you set it up with the helm room that makes you use the builder less, that's very good. Um, like right now, the, the good thing about Saber Slash is the bleed effect, right? Like that's what's really strong about it. Actually casting Saber Slash, not so good. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways you could buff it. You could, you could up the, the combo point generation like you do with Mutilate. Uh, I think you probably want to buff the ability damage, the, like, instantaneous ability damage, so it's not so bad to just be pressing Saber Slash. Uh, or you lean in heavy, heavier on the bleed aspect. Saber Slash buffs next Sinister Strike. That could be cool. I don't know. There, I mean, there's a lot of ways. I haven't really thought about, like, exactly what needs to be done to bring it in line with Mutilate. But, uh, right now, I've got to kill this Blood Sail Captain, you know what I mean? Or buffs finishing moves? Yeah. Hmm. Uh-oh. Vanish. Oh, this guy is level 48. Hmm. I hope my Toxic Revenger doesn't proc and aggro the mobs up above like it did last time. Okay, we're in slightly bit of trouble. Only slightly trouble. My evasion is on cooldown right now, and it's about to expire, and... Thistle T. Dodge parry, dodge parry, dodge parry. He's running away. He's dead. Can I finish off these two mobs? Iron patch? Mm. I'm at 900 health. I think I'm okay here. We got a we got a healing potion in two seconds also. What's he doing? He's got a shield. He made warrior noises. Okay, he's dead. And Cortell's Riddles right here. Okay. Zyrene, I could do a little bit more in-depth analysis of that if you want and get back to you later. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people, I would say, good question, Zyrene, because a lot of people complain about how they, do, they feel forced into using daggers. And I tell them, you don't want to compete with the hunters and the warriors for all your weapons. It's kind of nice that rogues are basically the only ones that want to be using daggers. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, uh, definitely people, I, I would say a lot of people would appreciate a little more variability there. And, uh, you know, there's definitely, like, when I'm using unfair advantage... <laughs> I would much rather have, like, a 2.7 speed slow-ass sword or fist weapon to be getting extra free attacks with than my stupid dagger. Uh-oh, I aggroed something again. Wait, I aggroed... Okay, we're running. Abandoned ship! 
overboard. I can hold my breath longer than they can. I'll probably be fine here. Oh, they're coming. They're still coming. I'm, f I'm going over to the other ship. I think, I think fundamentally the problem with Saber Slash, it's kind of like, it's the same problem that basically every other glove rune has. Is it so much worse than the other, well, I guess this is not really a helpful thing, but currently like all the other glove runes are just irrelevant because they're so much worse than Mutilate and Mutilate being your combo point builder, it's like fundamental to how Rogue plays. You're going to press Mutilate you, or whatever your combo point builder is a lot. So the like damage per energy efficiency of your combo point builder has a high impact on like all forms of Rogue play. Blaze and Bob in the chat. Hello. Gar Salthoof. Bloodsail Elder Magus. Okay. Well, you have a funny story. What's what's up, Blaze and Bob? What, what's, what's so funny? I don't think I want to fight these. I think I want to avoid them. Like a proper rogue. See, like... There's Captain Keelhaul. He's level 47. We can definitely get him. Waiting for Distract cooldown to get past these guys. Sarfinex redeemed change hat. All right, no more on this one. Let's go this one. Oh, what the? Okay, trouble. We're in trouble. I am probably dead here. See who we can take down with us. And then maybe by the time we resurrect, we'll be in a better situation. And we are... Okay, we're dead. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Wait, I can res right here, because it's... It was, uh, the Blood Moon recently. Okay, nice. Yeah, now we lost the world buff. Oh, yeah, you could... You could also... Well... You could also indirectly buff Saber Slash by making... Wep... You know... Weapons that are good for... You know, a Saber Slash build that aren't daggers, but that might, you know, also indirectly affect a lot of other classes. Uh, Blazin' Bob says, this is your funny story. I was out to lunch with Mel today. A guy walked up to us and asked if we did WoW content. He then introduced himself as Yellow. I think Yellow, he's Yellow Sketch in your Discord. First time I've been recognized IRL. Very cool. Yeah, the Blazin' Bob, someone was in my chat. They said, uh, I can't wait. I can't remember if it was in my chat today or in my Discord. I remember reading it today. Someone said they they saw Blazin' Bob at a sandwich shop today. <laughs> cool. Uh, and Bob, I'm looking forward to the podcast on Friday. Uh, it should be fun. I know you've invited me back a couple of times, and, and it's always like, I'm busy with this, I'm busy with that, so I'm happy to finally uh, get back on the show, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we killed some of the pirates in our past life. But not all of them. Distract. Wow, uh, maybe we should... 
just kill the mobs instead of trying to stealth past them. Line of sight here. The mob should come in. Nice. Kick. Okay, now we should be able to get... Whoa, 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 not permitted. Not permitted. Now we need to finish our quest before that guy resurrects. Because... If we're still out here questing when he resurrects, he's going to take the opportunity to kill me while I have other mobs on me. I think I'm dead, actually. I think we biffed it. <laughs> and I'm dead. <laughs> okay, this time though, my corpse is right next to the mob I need. So... I burned a thistle tea killing the druid, which was probably unnecessary. And then I didn't have it for the quest mob I needed. I'm thinking I can resurrect in that final room. And like aggro two things tops. I'll have my two minute cooldowns back. So that'll be blade flurry and healing potion. I think that's enough to get me through here. The boss's level, or the quest mob, not boss, is level 47. So that means I've got to be... Or he's four levels above me, which is quite a lot. We killed the other one that was 48, and you saw that was a lot of parries and dodges and misses. You finish your taxes? Yeah, dude, of course. Taxes for content creator income are a little bit complicated. With uh, multiple different income streams and zero W-2s. Okay. Wait, what's happening? Hmm. It seems as though Captain Keelhaul might be dead. It seems like that, yep, that is the case. All right, let's resurrect, heal, stealth. We're gonna have to fight this. Oh, wait, did they, did they see that I rezzed? Nope, they're leaving. Okay. And they jumped off the boat. They're in seal form now. Did you parse your 1099 last year? <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Do you get a Mighty Rage Potion recipe? No, I haven't seen a single one. I killed a lot of Black Rock Slayers hoping to get one. And the price just kept coming down, so eventually I was like, well, I'm just not going to get this anymore. <laughs> East of Deadwind and south of Red Ridge. Underneath there waits something for you. Some call it a hint, others a clue. There it will lie for endless tomorrows, binding its time in the Swamp of Sorrows. Cortello's Riddle, let's go. Alright, corpses despawning. 
Sawtooth respawning. Let's kill him. Whoa. Was this another... Oh, what the hell? What the hell, dude? I'm dead again. This was, I think it was another case of Toxic Revenger aggroing stuff from up above. <laughs> Damn it. All I wanted to do was kill one mob. Single-handedly got Righteous Orbs removed. How do you feel? I feel like... People who think that that's my fault for making a video are maybe not that bright. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> but I'll take credit. I will take credit. Um... And I would say Simonize Crusader Sweat. How is this the fourth video? And my advanced rogue guide on energy pooling from three years ago comes up first. I would say the 34,000 views I got on this video are well worth it. And I removed myself from, and you know, by having it banned, I removed myself of having the burden of uh, farming uh, righteous orbs. Uh, supposedly, Warcraft Logs was discussing righteous orbs on their and Crusader. Uh, before my video or stream even before I even did it a video or stream about it Okay, well now we're in the situation where we're gonna res on top of this guy with half health and Really hope that we can kill him So it's going to be Res, Evasion, Blade Flurry, Kill the Magus. Okay, I think we're in a good situation. We haven't aggroed anything else yet, apparently. I did- oh, uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> Heal Hall is slain. We got that thing. We vanished. Still have the vanish stealth buff. That's why I sprinted. The vanish buff gives me drastically increased stealth level, so it makes it easier for me to sneak past those guys. Well, uh, it, in light of all this Crusader stuff, I also reported a bug to Wowhead with their database. There was a problem. If you see, I don't know if they fixed it yet. Righteous Orb. So if you look at the Righteous Orb page, it does not list. Yeah, they didn't, they weren't able to fix the problem yet. I don't know if they will or not. It does not list Crimson Courier. And it also does not list Demetria, which is another mob outside of Stratholme that can drop Righteous Orbs. Uh, right? So it doesn't list it on the Righteous Orb page. But if you go to Crimson Courier, it lists it right there. Righteous Orb. What gives? If you go to Demetria, also... Righteous Orb, 13% off of this one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's a bit, um, um, you know, this problem there, it's like, 
If you looked up Righteous Orb on Wowhead, you might not think there were any mobs that were accessible. You have to like know that Crimson Courier is a mob to look for, right? Yeah, yeah, Darwin, We I, I know Blizzard removed it already. Dio Brando says, he goes by many names. Lord of the Sims, master of combo points, secret leader of SI7, Simon Banisher of the Orbs. <laughs> Is a god king rogue. He may hold no lands in Azeroth, but he has claimed all rogue parses as mere offshoots of his own design. <laughs> uh, I will take credit for that also. Yeah, sure. I accept credit. Alright, back into Stranglethorn Vale. We can blast a couple of quests. And I have to do one other time zone conversion, so if I so I can remember. I think we got about 50 minutes until Sarth stream. Or sorry, uh, Sarth podcast. Classic life that we're doing today. Shaky's payment to see Wolf McKinley. Okay, that's fine. An anonymous gifter gifted a tier one to Dio Brando. Well, thank you, anonymous gifter. I appreciate that. That's very generous. Stop at the vendor here. Get rid of some of our stuff. Maybe do a little bit of a repair. Imperial leather boots. Eh, probably disenchant those. Get rid of this. That's probably a disenchant angle also. Large fang. Chipped gorilla tooth. Okay, send those to the bank. This will be the box of stuff that we send to the bank. This is soulbound, so we're just vendoring it. Of course, gorilla hair. That's a disenchant. Uh, we definitely want to fill these waylaid supplies because they give decent experience. Oh, wicked leather bracers. Fuck, dude. These are going to be very expensive. I can make them on my other character, but uh, I don't. I don't appreciate how much gold they're gonna cost, which is just which is just a fact of like, it's still pretty early in the phase, so like, a lot of these things are expensive. That that's the reality of it. Like on my main, I just have a bunch of boxes, and I'm just like, yeah, I'll fill them in like three weeks or something, once the price is on the. All the trade goods come down. You know, no no rush in filling those up any faster than I have to while the prices are still very high. There's one quest turn in. I don't know where all my other quest turn ins are. I'm kind of wandering around hoping I see a yellow exclamation point. There we go. Wait, is he doing some kind of dialogue? Is he going to give me a new quest? That's okay. We can check back later. Fleet Master. All right. 8,000 experience for that one. I like it. Uh, who's this? Oh, this is the Stranglethorn Fever guy. Under this boat. Art of Mock. Medicine Blanket. Ooh, 10k and a level up. Hell yeah. Okay, we're level 44 now. Remorseless attacks. Boom. Uh, let's go to the mailbox. Let's mail some stuff away. And then we got to decide on another quest zone to go to. Probably Feralis. I think Feralis is uh, a good place to go. Simonize, Simonize Bank. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Eight, nine, ten. Good. These waylaid supplies, I can dump them in here. Oh, these can go to Simon Bank also. And this. And this. Or wait, no, I know. Uh, 
Mm, maybe we can do a Nomergon. Maybe we'll do Nomergon tomorrow. I, don't, I think if we try to do Nomergon right now, it might bump into the podcast time. Where's the free action potion? Didn't I take free action potion out of my bank? Oh well, looks like I didn't. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, Nomer will give me uh, some good experience for sure. <laughs> 